One of the biggest problems that I hear from guys who are working to get off the truck is what I call the tech vortex. Check out what Josh from License to Wash has been dealing with for the past couple of years, and then let's talk about some of the ways that you can avoid the same problems that he's dealing with. Hey Mike, uh, it's Josh with License to Wash. Uh, yeah, so I've been a self-employed um, single truck business for 13 years. Um, I actually made my first hire uh, two years ago and uh, was finally working to, to get away from being the owner operator. I uh, had a guy trained up and he was running most of the jobs without me. Um, I was able to stay back and focus on more important things. I was uh, building up better systems, doing better follow-ups, um, and you know the business just really started to grow exponentially. And I was much happier uh, in that role. Uh, but then all of a sudden he quit without notice um, and uh, I was right back to being my own technician. Um, this year I hired somebody else, same deal, had him trained up, got him working a few jobs without me for a few weeks and uh, then he uh, just told me he didn't want to do it. He felt like he was uh, you know, running my business for me while I stayed home. and. Um, I don't think I, I could really convince him otherwise, but um, I had to go back into the field and because uh, I couldn't afford to lose him. Uh, he actually just put in his two weeks um, and now I'm looking for somebody else, but um, been burned out for quite a while now and um, trying to figure out how I can uh, stop being the house wash guy um, and get out of this cycle. That is a telling testimonial and something that I am sure lots of you guys have faced. Finding the right employees that are going to be good representatives of your company and good stewards of your name is a big, difficult task. And like Josh, it's pretty easy to get burned out after working for so long and so hard to build your business up to the point when you're ready to get off the truck and then just continually get disappointed time after time by people that don't care as much as you do. The truth is guys can go a decade or more and not learn this on their own and just get stuck in that tech vortex, getting pulled back to the truck because you can't seem to find the right employees. Constantly hiring, constantly training, wasting so much time, money, and energy. Obviously, this is something many people struggle with, and we cover this in depth in the Next Level course in our hiring module. But I wanted to share three things to think about that have really been beneficial for my business. Before bringing just anyone on board, you need to understand that extra manpower entails a whole new string of legal obligations, liabilities, expenses, and of course, paperwork. Number one, don't trust your instincts. I have learned this the hard way, and don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with following your gut. But do your due diligence, do your vetting, do your background research in order to verify your instincts. I've unfortunately made some very poor choices based on instinct and desperation. I've hired people without doing any background checks, any research, and I usually regret it. Child molesters, people on parole for very serious crimes, people that you don't really want out driving your vehicles or representing your company, wearing your shirts, wearing your hats, talking to your customers and interacting with them. That's just not who you want out there. Uh, and these are things that can damage your business but are also very easily avoidable with the proper research. Number two, spend the money and drug test. Whatever the cost, it is worth it. Of course, this is done after your entire vetting process, which really should weed out any bad apples. The process that we use is pretty intensive, requires the potential employees to jump through multiple hoops just to be able to sit down and have a face-to-face -face interview. I've been doing this a long time, and when you're dealing with folks that have drug issues, you're dealing with folks that potentially can damage your reputation. Create both legal and safety liabilities, and don't forget about theft. I've easily lost over $15,000 in equipment loss and time theft. I don't even want to talk about the countless thousands of dollars worth of damage caused by employees that probably weren't in the right state of mind to be operating my equipment or my vehicle. There are some legal parameters that you also need to know when dealing it with the interview process, like asking about age or prescription medications, but all of this is covered in the next level course. The last thing we're going to talk about is checking references. Always ask for two professional and one personal reference. I require them to tell me about their previous job history as well. References and job history can really tell you a lot about a person and their work history. I can say this because I've done it, don't get lazy. You've got the references, pick up the phone and call them. This is absolutely essential. And don't just call the professional references and the personal references, you've got their job history. Call those businesses and ask about that employee. 
you'd be surprised what people are willing to tell you about an applicant if you'd only ask. Again, I would play on their human nature and their people's willingness to help and tell them that you're trying to hire your first employee and you're trying to make the best decision possible for your business and for your family. Even the best reference for that individual might be willing to shed some light on things that will help you make your decision. Josh did talk about one of his employees that didn't work out, feeling that they were running the business because they were out there doing the work. Now, that is something that I have run into on occasion as well, and I think that establishing the job criteria from day one, from the job description and how you write it, laying out the foundation so there is no question as to their role. People need to understand that just because you're not out there doing the work doesn't mean that they are running a business. Employees are the backbone of our businesses. They are the boots on the ground that are getting the work done. And don't get me wrong, you don't have to justify anything to them. The bottom line, you're the business owner, you're the boss, you make the decisions, and that is why the vetting process and finding people that fit into the position and your company is so essential. If you're interested in learning more about how I do my hiring, the vetting process that we use, I lay it all out in the Next Level course. Check out the link below. Hope the video helped, and you guys have a great day.